Brian Dolesky with Able Distributors. I hope you've seen the intro video to the Bosch furnace. It's a great furnace. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the installation tips that you should know. Again, everything is found in the manual. So if you're like me, you'll love our website, www.shop.abledistributors.com. And there you can actually download the manual ahead of time. So if it's a new furnace to you, you can kind of go through. I used to download manuals and I'd highlight all the things that were important to me. So I'd remember them or I could look them up quickly while I was doing my very first install. So that helps. So let's get into it. Now, with every single high efficiency furnace, you've got to get rid of the condensation. And the condensation is very acidic. So you want to make sure you get it out of the furnace. So just like any other brand, Bosch wants their furnace tilted forward. Now they actually say half to three quarters inch tilted forward to make sure you get rid of that condensate and it comes all the way up to this clear collector box and out the drain. So remember, slope it forward, but side to side, it's got to be perfectly level. If you look here, the pressure switch goes to the collector box. So if that water starts to pool up on one side or the other, it's going to trip it just like a, a float limit. So side to side has got to be level, a half to three quarter slope front. Even when you put it in a horizontal position, you're still going to want it to slope forward to get rid of that condensation. Combustion air, you can take it from the room if you want. Again, I would put something on there to stop a homeowner from setting, setting paperwork or something up there and plugging it off, or the outside. Either way, it's, it's rated for both. Clearance, now this is different than a lot of furnaces. Zero, so the sides, the back, the bot, it's zero, zero clearance to combustibles, one inch to the top, three inches to the front. So if you're putting it in a, in a closet with a door, make sure that door is at least three inches away and you'll be good. When you go in the horizontal position, you're gonna to wanna to use, leave room for this trap. So this trap mounts on the outside, either side. These two go through a little hole once you remove which uh, side you're, you're gonna use. The hoses are two different sizes. I've already had somebody say, hey, I had a hard time getting a hose on. One went real easy, one went really difficult. He probably had them switched. They're two different size hoses. Make sure you know that. When you go in upflow, it's pretty, pretty simple. I would not glue to this. I would put a little piece of plastic off of this and then go into three quarter uh, drain, just in case you ever have to clean or, or service this. It does come with two elbows. And the purpose of these elbows is, and why you need to make sure when you put it horizontal that you leave enough room, they give you this bracket. And what this bracket does is it just allows you to mount that trap in the bracket and then you're going to mount this bracket like that, probably right there. And when you come out with your tubes, having two elbows to connect to your trap is going to be, make it a lot easier. So that's what the elbows are for, two different size hoses. And when you put this in a horizontal mode, you got to remember that that's going to be hanging down at least seven inches. So you're going to have to create a way to have that seven inches. Uh, venting. All of these will start with two inch, but some of you are going to want to go to three right, right away. The 60 and the 80, it's really up to you. So the 60 and the 80, you can go two inch up to 60, 60 feet. Now you got to remember that every single elbow is five feet. If it's a long sweep, 10, if it's a standard elbow. So do long sweep, do 45s if you can. So, and then you can go three inch up to 90. Now, the 100 and the 120, you're going to want to go to three inch right away. Yes, technically the 100, you can go 20 or 25 feet in two inch. I'm telling you, it should be better off going three inch all the way on both those. Return. Obviously, it's got an opening for a standard 16 by 25. But again, I'm hoping people just get in the practice of putting this thing up on a six inch return box and putting a 20 inch by 25 filter and getting more airflow. Getting that airflow over to the other side, you remove that inner panel, it makes it super easy. That return box, honestly, I would do it on the 84 ton, the 100, 120. If you've never seen the, the return boxes that we stock, 
That's what it looks like. It's just solid. It's got a little lip that stops the furnace from sliding off of it. You drop the furnace in, put a couple screw holes, and you're going to cut side of this out and the side of the furnace and put in a 20 inch tall filter. Uh, what else? The LP kit. I like it a lot. You don't have to worry about ordering one. It comes in every single uh, instruction packet, the LP kit. We covered the different size hoses. Now let's dip into the inside, checking gas pressure because on a, a new install, you should be doing that. Setting up the dip switches, whether you have a two-stage thermostat or single stage, we're gonna do that. And when we get into there, we're gonna have a close-up of the board, but always remember, the one thing I really like about Bosch is they're very good on putting all the instructions, default codes, the dip switch settings on the inside of the blower door. I like that a lot because we all know manuals get lost. So now let's look at the dip switches and how to set them up. Let's get into the startup procedure for the Bosch furnace. So what you're looking at here is the gas valve. What you want to do is check the gas pressure. The first port we're highlighting here is the inlet pressure port. That's the pressure from the gas company. You need a minimum of 4.5. Most of the time it's going to be 7 or 8. 4.5 is pretty low. And when it gets down to there, there's something else going on. Not a big enough gas pipe pressure, something. Now we're highlighting the outlet pressure of the gas valve and the two adjusting screws to adjust it. And what you want is 3.5 inches of water column on high, 1.6 on low. And those two screws, you remove the, the, the brass caps and there's adjustment screws inside. Temp rise on most of the furnaces, every single one is a little bit differently, but most of them are 35 to 65 degrees. And again, with temperature rise, if you're at 64, you're awfully close to the high end speed up the blower so you get bring that number down so you're not going to max out and if you're at 36 one above the low again slow down that blower because if you go too cold you're going to condensate in areas you just don't want to condensate in as you look at the board you can see the low voltage is pretty simple the w1 is w so if you have just one wire for heat from your thermostat and you're doing a single stage thermostat and you're going to let the furnace time out that board you're going to use the w1 no jumper no nothing needed so that is for a single stage thermostat and it's timed or you can put it in auto now the way auto works is it's going to learn the characteristics of that furnace over time and it's going to say okay the last run we were in low fire for 10 minutes and high fire for 32 minutes. And it's going to think, okay, boy, that took a long time to heat up the place. We're going to go into high fire a little earlier. Or it could be the other side of the flip coin where it says, you know what, if we ran low fire a little bit longer, maybe that'd be a more efficient way to go for comfort and uh, temperature in the home. So that's the auto mode. I don't know if I would use that mode. I'm kind of old school. I kind of like it just timed out. So let's get in to how you adjust this. So the switch S1 is what you're looking at now. Comes with two little dip switches that you can move. And that is the delay to second stage when you're just using W1. So you can have it be off. And that's the way it comes from the factory. It comes off, which means if you don't adjust this setting, when you hook up just the W1, the furnace is going to be low fire. It's never going to go to high fire. Your next option would be 10 minutes, auto, or 20 minutes. Again, I don't know if I do the auto. I don't know if it's for me. 20 minutes seems way too long and low fire. I think 10 minutes is the way to go. But remember, it comes in the off position from the factory, so it's planning on you having a two-stage thermostat. So make sure you either adjust it or put a two-stage stat in. S2 set of switches. There's four switches here. Switches number one and two, what they do is they adjust how long that blower runs after the call for heat is done. Burners are off, how long that blower stays on. It's set from the factory for 90 seconds. I think that's pretty appropriate. You don't want to start moving lukewarm air. Switches three and four are the, how long the blower runs after the call for AC is done. You can then see it's off. 
It's set to run for 60 seconds. I'm kind of curious how that would work as far as comfort and maybe efficiency if you made it run for 120 seconds, you added another minute to it. S3 is the blower speed. You see four dip switches here. One, two, three are the ones you're gonna use. Four is not used. Again, you're gonna to wanna to adjust it by the temp rise. And obviously you gotta take into consideration how many tons of cooling you have on that, on that system. SW1 is just a little push button here. And you can see the LED screen that was in the, in the, uh, on the board. So that's just a way to scroll through the last 10 fault codes if you get them. Now, to me, you install it right, you size it right, you're not gonna have any fault codes, it's gonna work perfectly. One more thing to know is the EAC, the electronic air cleaner and the humidifier are both 115. Now, you'll have a spud for the 115 and you're just gonna pull the common over by the other commons. And then with these, when doing a humidifier, the way I would do it, is I'd have my humidifier separate and I would have an isolation relay where that 115 volts just made a connection. So unlike the general fan, the new one, it's just a dry contact needed, just touching the two wires together. I would wire it in series with the humidistat. So the blower has to be blowing for that thing to go uh, and put humidity into the unit. And there you have it. It's a pretty decent, pretty simple. I love that there's dip switches and not complicated wires to move or little jumpers to move. I like that a lot. I like that you don't, it's not confusing whether you need a jumper or not. You just do that. I do think it's, it definitely needs to know that it's off. That staging is off from the factory. Every other factory setting I like, that one, you gotta know. If you hook up to W1, you're gonna have to go in, change it, move it to 10 minutes between first and second stage you'll be all good. One last thing that I love about the Bosch furnaces, and honestly, their IDS condenser units the same way. Inside the covers, they've got all the dip switches in here, the blower settings, the, the time delay, everything you see here and in the manual is inside the cover. I absolutely love it. So everything off the lower board is on the lower cover and everything needed for the upper, the gas pressure, everything like that is on the upper board. Both doors have uh, view windows through them. I like that a lot. There you got it. The Bosch 96% gas furnace. Oh, one last thing. Upflow, horizontal right, horizontal left. No downflow, won't work.